So finding this camera bag is a project that has been about two years in the making. And that's because there's plenty of good camera bags out there. And there's also plenty of cheap camera bags out there. But there's not a lot of good cheap camera bags. And then when you consider so many of these camera bags were designed back when the big full-size DSLRs were sort of the popular camera, a lot of these bags are completely unsuitable, even if they are well-priced and well-built. They're just completely unsuitable for the Canon M50 or the Canon M50 Mark II. After a number of false starts, testing a whole bunch of different bags, this is my number one recommendation. This is my daily driver bag. And honestly, I could not be more happy with it. It's also a low pro brand bag, which is low pro is one of the most premium bag manufacturers for camera bags and camera backpacks. So you know you're gonna get a good quality product. And of the different products I've tested over the past couple of years, this one, literally the build quality and the fit and finish is on par with camera bags that I have tested that have been $200, $250 plus. So you are getting a very premium product for a very, very low price. Now the recommended retail price on the bag is $90, but what I've found is that it is almost always on sale. So in the description down below, I've put a link to the listing of where I bought the bag. And I would just have a look and if it's on sale, I think it's a good deal and that you should buy it. If it's currently at the $90 recommended retail price, I'll probably just hold back and keep an eye on that link until you find that the bag's on sale again. And the first thing that's gonna jump out at you when you get the bag is, is just how rigid it is. It really feels like it's gonna protect the gear inside pretty well, and there's a fair bit of padding. Even on this outside pocket, uh, where you can see there's, there's a bit of a, I don't know, sort of a bunched padding going across there. And with a lot of camera bags and a lot of camera backpacks, that outer pocket doesn't have a lot of protection. And even the low pro bag I had before this did not have that. So anything you put in there was sort of a little bit at risk. Now it's got this little pocket here, and in this pocket I like to put my batteries because I want just a dedicated pocket that I can easily grab my batteries when my battery dies. And just a little pro tip, this is uh, one of those little sort of uh, convenience bags you get on sort of long haul uh, airplane flights, like when they give you like a toothbrush or socks or a sleeping mask or whatever. This one says it's from China Airlines. Uh, but I always grab these when I'm on those planes because I use them to put my batteries in and sometimes I'll actually carry two bags. So I'll carry one and I'll have it sort of identified either a different color bag or a different tag on it. And I will put my charge batteries in one and when the batteries are dead, I put them in the other. In this case, all I have to do is I put my charge batteries in this bag and then loose in the pocket once they're dead, I put them in there loosely so I know which ones are charged and which ones aren't. Um, also, sometimes if you're on those long haul flights, what you'll find is that you don't get these sort of bags in economy, but you do in the first class cabin. So when we're walking out and I'm walking through that first class cabin, I'm just picking up everybody's bags that were left behind because I, I use them for cables and batteries and all kinds of different purposes. Now this uh, next pocket, uh, this is just another pocket. Uh, now it's got room for pens through here. Uh, it's got room for like sort of SD cards or change or, uh, and in fact, actually in this top bit here, you can even though they don't advertise it, you can fit a 13 inch MacBook. Now it's a bit of a tight fit and you gotta sort of squeeze it on there. I don't think I would buy this bag specifically to carry the 13 inch MacBook, but in a pinch, if you're only doing it once a week or so and it's mainly your camera bag, it will do that. Now, what this bag does very well is carry a tablet. And I've got my, I think it's a 11, 12 inch tablet in here. That fits nicely in there. And one of the cool things they've done with this design is when you actually push the tablet in, unlike a lot of bags, the actual, sleeve stops about here on the bag, meaning that when you set this bag on the ground, the bottom of your tablet is never hitting the ground. Now, even if you do put your MacBook in this outer pocket, you can see the, the front edge of this pocket is kind of elevated. So there's a, not only there's a whole bunch of padding there, but it kind of comes up at an angle. So you really don't have that problem if you're you putting the MacBook in there. Just make sure you don't set it down sort of on this side of the bag first, because that could cause a bit of a problem. But anything in this pocket is protected by design, by Low Pro. Uh, once again, that's another feature that wasn't in my old Low Pro bag. So I think that's pretty clever. Now, we've got these two straps on the side, and these are kind of interesting. They sort of reinforce 
the pocket or the main pocket that holds your camera gear in, and you have the ability to sort of tighten that with the little straps here. But what this also does, this is a huge insurance policy. If you've got the bag sitting down and you've taken your gear in and out and done what, what, what you do, these things are sort of just hanging down like this. What you should notice is you should think, okay, I can see, I, I know as a matter of habit, I always buckle these before I pick up and take off. So I buckle these in. What this does is this is like an insurance policy to save you. If you've had the bag laying on the ground, you've changed some lenses, got some stuff out, and you have accidentally left it unzipped, which I have done on occasion, and I've done it with bags that don't have these straps, I then stand up, the bag opens up and all the gear tumbles to the ground. So you can imagine if you forget to zip it up, if you're just looking at it, you're quick, you notice these straps are undone, you quickly clip those straps, that is actually going to save the gear from falling out. So the, the gear is still not going to fall out. So I kind of like that, just a little bit of insurance. Also, if for some reason the zipper fails, I've never had a zipper fail on a low pro bag, but you never know. Now I'll just have a, we'll have a look inside the bag. Now inside the bag, it's an interesting configuration because it's a little bit different than a lot of other bags, uh, which makes it particularly suitable to the Canon M50, but maybe not suitable for bigger camera setups. And you notice here, we really just have sort of straight slots where traditionally a bag, a camera bag like this would have these come up and then they would go at a Y angle and then the camera would sit here, thereby the wider part of the body was up here and then the lens would come down through here. Uh, this bag has this sort of little extra compartment here which stops you from using it that way. So this bag is really only suitable when you have cameras that will kind of fit in like this. In addition to that, this uh, pocket here is not removable. So just be aware of that. This isn't removable. So you can't really reconfigure this in the way that other camera bags would be configured. For the Canon M50, that's fine because this just fits in here like this. And what you can see is I've got the Canon M50. That's the way I keep it in here. And I've got one, two, three, four lenses plus the one that's on the camera. So I've got a five lens setup. And just going through the type of lenses I have, um, this is my Viltrox 23 millimeter uh, F1.4. I've got a video on this. This is my favorite lens on the camera. And I will, if I could only have one lens for the Canon M50, this would be the lens. Uh, I will link my video to that in the description down below. I have the 55 to 200 lens. This is the most underrated lens, I think, on the mount. It gets you to that 200 millimeters. And the one thing when you're traveling, the most important thing is that you have the right focal length for whatever situation you're in. And if you have something that's far off in the distance, whether it be a draft or a bit of landscape or something beautiful or sports, what have you, if you don't have the ability to reach out and grab that, if you've got all these sort of shorter focal length lenses, then you're not going to have the right lens with you. So having the 55 to 200 with you just gives you that whole extra range that none of the other lenses are gonna give you. And I think it'll get you shots you can't get with any of the other lenses. So that's one of my favorite lenses. I always travel with the 55 to 200. Now, uh, one of everybody's favorites, the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4. I use this for low light photo, low light video, vlogging, um, as well as shooting YouTube shots like this. And then I've got the 11 to 22. This is my sort of inside the city, big buildings around me, trying to get the surrounding environment, uh, wide angle, landscape photography, uh, interior, you know, beautiful churches, interior architecture, historic libraries, historic buildings. Uh, that's what I use there. And over here, now I've got a couple microphones with me. This is the MKE uh, 200. This is a tiny little portable microphone that is super inconspicuous on the camera. So if you're going somewhere and you don't want to be sort of overly obvious and people looking at you, which they do if you've got a big furry microphone on top, this thing is just black and it blends in and it's just hardly noticeable. So I really like that when I wanna be inconspicuous. But if I want the best audio quality possible, then up here I've got my Rode, um, 
video might go to with the dead cat on. So that is a fair bit more conspicuous. Uh, when you walk around, people will look at you. They will notice that you're capturing video with something like this, but it does give you the best possible audio. Now, obviously that fits in there as well. And then I've just got my little battery charger here. Uh, in addition to those pockets, there is one little pocket up here for an SD card. It's kind of in a funny spot, but it, I guess it is, you won't miss it. Uh, just right here, you've got this little sort of place for an SD card. So one thing I would suggest is with any camera bag I've got, I always stick a spare, even if it's a small SD card that I don't use anymore, I always stick a spare SD card in the bag. And I do that because that's the one thing that you go out the door, you've got all your gear, and if you imported your photos last time and you left them in your computer and you don't have the SD card, all of this stuff is irrelevant. So sticking a spare, even 16 gigabyte, you, know, you only pay, well, nowadays I think about 256 gigabytes, I've seen them down as low as $30. Um, definitely carry a spare SD card with you. And this has just got this perfect little pocket for it. Now, the other thing I do like about this bag compared to a lot of the new uh, modern bags is the fact that the, the if you're going to carry a laptop or if you're going to carry a tablet it is contained on this side of the bag now a lot of the new backpacks are putting that on this side of the bag which uh there's an, you know this element oh it's it's protected and it's a better location it's against your back and people can't steal it Honestly, it's going to be very hard for somebody to steal something out of here. It's it's not going to be easy at all. But in addition to that, if you put a computer or tablet or something like that on this side of the bag, it doesn't matter how much padding is on the back of it. It is like putting a board against your back. One, it is not very comfortable at all. So I do not like bags in general with that configuration. Until somebody fixes that problem, right now I'm saying I want my laptop or I want my tablet on this side of the bag. The other thing is you can literally feel it pushing on your shoulder blades and sort of your back as if you're putting all this pressure on it. It doesn't feel nice. It doesn't feel like you're going to be doing the right thing by your computer or tablet or doing that. And I do worry about that damaging the unit over the long term. Now, while we're on the back here, I like these straps. They are well padded, but what's really critical about uh, backpack straps is that they come off sort of at the right angle and they just sit smoothly across your shoulders. So you can get a bag that's got tons of padding, but if they're sewn on square and they are not sort of form fitted like this, that is still gonna cut into you and sort of not feel great. So these come off at sort of that perfect angle and wrap around and really spread the uh, pressure across your shoulders quite nicely. So. I am a big fan of that as well. And we've got the little handle here, so when you're picking it up and picking it down. On the sides, we've got uh, water bottle holders or maybe for a small tripod or a small um, desktop tripod you can put in there. I would generally put a desktop tripod in one side and a water bottle holder on the other side. And while I don't go anywhere without this backpack anymore, the other thing I don't go anywhere without is a mini desktop tripod because they are so, so useful and so inexpensive. And I've just thrown a video on screen now and that will take you through to my most recommended mini tripod for the Canon M50. And as I say in the video, this is the best tripod and it's not even close.